Hello and good evening. You are back with me on the rock with the crew. Thanks for coming back. Bye. Dogs will be here any minute, I'm sure of it. I have a fun show for you today. Unlike all the other ones, uh, this one should be fun, entertaining. Let's hope for once. Those of you who don't stick around to the end of my show, you might want to stick around to the end of this one because this episode is about to explain to you why you're going to be wealthy in this lifetime. I know I say that a lot in my videos and a lot of people say, oh, it's, uh, we're creating generational wealth. And part of what my channel is here to do to help you going forward is to help you retain the generational wealth in which I know that's coming to you for sure. Here's how I know. Well, I worked for a man many, many years ago, <clears throat> probably financially one of the wisest men I ever worked for. I worked, all of them were very intelligent in their own way. But he had a certain something, something. You know, that little something, something that some people have that it's only a few words and it's all you need from them. He had a saying when I asked him one time for some money. And he had this saying, and the saying went like this. <clears throat> if you want good advice, ask a man for his money. Yeah. Walk up to a man and ask him for his money. <clears throat> See, he'll cherish the money to the point where he won't give you the money. He'll give you sound advice. That's what he'll give you. When I first started getting into crypto, by the way, that man was a multi-billionaire. And his kids never cared for him. His kids liked spending his money his kids never really thought too much of him. Sad that, really, but I don't know why, but I used to worship the ground the man walked on. I was a much younger man back then. But there was something about him. There's something about that type of logic. <clears throat> that old logic is not just a saying. It's a... <clears throat> It's so resounding in your bones and the way you feel it. When it's said to you, you just know it's true. You just know it's true. See, there's something going on right now in the world, in the country, and a lot of people haven't put in two, two, two and two together. And it doesn't matter to me what you think of the man. Um, there's a man, orange hair, running for president as many of us know. That man, I don't care what your personal beliefs are of the man. If you would like to be wealthy, and if you own crypto, you may want to listen to the next few moments. In particular, in a unique way, if you own XRP. I'm going to tie it all together, and I know that sounds crazy, but I am. See, it's not about that man. It's about what he knows about generating wealth. If you look back, I had this explained to me by a banker not long ago, right after the uh, Nashville event. He explained this to me because he actually knew a couple of the people that actually orange-pilled, not just Bitcoin, but he cryptoed the wannabe president. He said, Alan, you're missing the point. And I said, okay. Well, tell me then what the point is. He said, the point is Trump creates millions of dollars. His businesses are successful. He's a successful man. He helps others succeed in avenues of real estate or in promoting themselves. But typically he takes a little skinny from it and he makes more and his empire gets larger. He doesn't need a larger empire. He understands that. He's reaching the age where he, like the wise man that I started the show with, understands it's time to create the wealth around you. 
So he looks around and he thinks to himself, how am I going to set myself above all the other candidates? Well, it doesn't make sense to anybody who understands fundamentals of money and the monetary system to do it the way the other party is doing it, like them or not, like them or love them. You don't hand money to the poor to create generational wealth. That's not how you do it. That's not how wealth is generated, right? So he's thinking to himself, how do I separate myself from just handing money to people and then buying goods and then them being broke again? See where we're going. If you think about this in a bigger sense, and this one goes like this, well, huh, he can't get everybody to drill an oil well. <clears throat> that's out. He can't get everybody to invent the internet. No, that's pretty much out. He can't get everybody to buy real estate. Well, that's not a bad angle because he's in real estate. He understands real estate quite well. But that's, that's played out. Doubling your money in real estate right now is very complicated. Very sophisticated traders can do that. And that even takes years, decades even. So where does he see the next boom, the next economic boom for the little man? Somebody's got only $1,000 to invest, maybe $10,000 to invest. So he starts dabbling in crypto. And then he essentially gets orange pill. Well, let's look back and think to ourselves, what is that going to do for him? Well, he's going to be able to print a ton of money. We already know that. He's going to lower interest rates, print a ton of money. Where does that money going to go? Well, is he going to bail the bankers out? probably going to have to do something along those lines as well. But when, if you look back, what we learned back in 2020 was all those people that use those stimmy checks to buy crypto, quadrupled, 10x their money, 15x their money. Well, which coin didn't get those 10 and 15x's? Well, yeah, it starts with an X. They didn't. They were suppressed. They need help. They need help from, I don't know, maybe somebody who has some pull at the top. And they could use some maybe white hat help. I don't know. I'm not saying he's white hat or yellow hat. I don't really know for sure. I'd like to believe. You get where I'm going. So now all those Trump supporters who don't own crypto, don't own XRP or Bitcoin or the top 10 like I always talk about, are gonna go, well, I'm behind this guy. I'll buy whatever. I bought his red hat. I'll buy this. I'll buy that. Well, let's think about the numbers now. He had what, 74, 70, 70, 70 million people voted for him the last go around. I'm gonna say it's gonna be probably close to the same. We only have what, 40, maybe 50 pe million people in America that own crypto? I'm thinking there's 25 more million people he's going to bring to the space. Napkin numbers here, guys. But what's the bonus to him? Let's look back at some of the, you know, maybe Henry Ford, maybe some other people, maybe some Rockefellers, maybe some of those people, because they brought some people in when they had candidates and people that they liked and they promoted stuff and they got them to get into the oil industry or the automotive industry and all of those people became wealthy around these wealthy families and they created their own parties and their own group. Parties, I don't mean festival parties, I mean parties that persuaded Congress and became the financial power with networks of the next hundred years of our country, this US in particular. So when you're following the ball with me now here, so all of a sudden he's got all of these people that he's going to be able to pump money because when they print money, when they create money through the treasury and when all that money circulates and it gets directly put into the system, exactly like I talked about before, there is almost $900 billion. And I know that doesn't sound big today, 
but it's actually 1.8 billion because they've extracted 900 billion dollars out of the system. That extraction is almost a trillion and they're going to put that back into the system here real soon. That's a two trillion dollar swing. Where's that two trillion dollars going to go? Is that going to make real estate go way up? No, no, it's not going to do that. It doesn't have the energy or the power to pull that off, correct? It just can't move the needle. Where's it going to move the needle? That's right. Where are there more lobbyists today than ever before? Where is that ball going? Let's get back to what he's just done. He's created a, not a generation, he's created four generations. Boomers, X, Z, Millennial all the way down the line, Millennial Z. Those four generations have millions of people in it who have wallets just like yours, and they're going to become ultra wealthy people, which is the future of voting, which is the future of what people believe, which is the future of innovation, which is the future of AI, which is the future of you and I, and that's where this country and all of it can go, and he can leapfrog all the other countries. So, like I said, the dogs would show up. Do you understand the big picture now? Okay. The other party could do the same thing. I'm not saying they're out of the picture. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm just saying he's putting his name on it and he's doing it, right? He's making it happen, right? Okay. So now let's get back to why I asked you to stay the whole length of this video. See, if you want wealth, if you're asking for a man's money, this is how I know you're going to be wealthy. Not just what I just explained to you, which should make sense as well. Look at this guy just leaning on me here in the video. Like, you know, he just owns the place. At least he hasn't kicked the camera over yet. Right, Derek? Yeah. I met with a bunch of people over the weekend and he was like, how many cameras have you gone through, Alan? <laughs> yeah. Had a great meetup with a bunch of people. I love you all. Can't name everybody right now, but I will. Over the days, uh, we will we'll meet up again. It's going to be so much fun. So let's get back to the man that gave me the great some of the best financial wisdom of my life. If you want money from something, someone, so the opposite of what he what he did what the beginning of the video was okay you ask them wisdom so if you ask for advice you'll get money the exact opposite of what i said earlier if you want money you ask advice What you've been doing is you've been asking advice. That's what intelligent people do to obtain money. It's the other half of that equation. See, people think if they want to get money, they go to somebody and they ask for money. No. If you ask a man for money, he will give you wisdom. He will give you vision. Right? But if you ask for advice, they'll give you money. That's what you did. You went to the internet, you found a coin or a token or a network, and you asked it advice. Therefore, if you look at the law of financial spirit energy knowledge, of the wisdom of the ages, you ask the internet and all of your research and watching everybody's show with all the news channels and all the rest of it, and all of those things are telling you you're asking advice and you're receiving it in the form, ultimate form of money. That's how I know you're going to be wealthy. 
Those are three reasons I just did in the last 15 minutes of how when people ask me, Alan, how is it you're so sure that we're all going to create generational wealth? Of those three things that I just painted to you, you've done the most important. Centuries old wisdom of you went to the internet and asked advice. You went to YouTube channels and asked advice. You went to anybody who was smart and who knew anybody, David Schwartz, all of these people, you've been asking them online through your presence for their advice. And the universal language of asking for great advice is the payoff of money. That's how I know. So now you know why I'm so sure that you and I are in the right place. We've done the right thing. Not to mention the hundreds of brilliant shows out there, much smarter than mine, that do all the background news. And here's the news of the day and then more news and more banks and more central banks and all of the adoption and all of these things are coming your way. But that old school wisdom told me. And for more old school wisdom like that, Stick around and maybe like and subscribe. Subscribe maybe, hang out. I'd still like to break 20,000 one day. That'd be a lot of fun. So I know you're gonna do well. We're all going to be well. You're gonna to wanna to think about how to deal with all that wealth. So get with some good people because there's great people out there. Really good sound financial advice with people who understand crypto. And they're growing and there's a lot of it out there but don't just get rich and expect that you're going to be able to manage it from underneath your mattress that's not a good plan guys it really isn't all right guys i hope you gained a little bit of wisdom a little bit of information if nothing else the dog showed up and made it entertaining anyway right that was a cat you know what do you want me to do you want bells what do you want whistles lights come on there was birds <laughs> all right guys I love you very much, and I will see you all soon. So it came to my attention that, uh, yeah, I'm uh, being called out because I buckled two of the people who are the naysayers. Oh, Alan, why do you do that creepy weird thing at the end? It's not funny, Alan. It's not. You're, you're better than that. And then I ran into Bonnie, who asked me about it, and her wonderful husband, Todd. And they said, you know, we hang on to the very end of the video just hoping you're going to do one. Of, and they're not there anymore, Alan. And I thought, you know what? I've never been a man who listened to people tell them what not to do. And I did. I broke my damn rule. I ain't having it anymore. Love you all.